Welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to use the command prompt. If you're on a Windows machine, what you need to do is just go into your start menu and search for the Anaconda prompt. You can also use your regular command prompt, but if you use the Anaconda prompt, it already knows where all of the extra files we installed are. So go ahead and just do that now. If you're on a Macintosh, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go into your Applications folder, scroll down to Utilities, open Utilities, and then you can find your terminal emulator application right here. Now I've just installed this or put this on my dock for easy access, so I'm going to go ahead and launch this and make it a little bit larger so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll go ahead and maximize that and make it a bit larger. So why are we using the command prompt at all? Well, it's a text interface that gives us a lot of extra features that aren't available in our standard interface. I should make a quick disclaimer. Nothing that I'm going to show you in this class is particularly dangerous, but it is possible to really screw your computer up from the command line, so just do this at your own risk. But if you're careful and you stick to what we do in this class, you're not going to have any problems. This might look a little bit intimidating, but there are only a few basic commands that you'll need to know to really be able to use it effectively. Now, when you first open your terminal, you might not know where does the terminal think I am in my file system. Because the way it operates is, it lives inside of a folder, and you can type commands that will operate on folders or files that are in the same directory. So the first thing that you might want to do is you might want to print your working directory. We do that with pwd and hitting enter. Here you can see that my working directory is users and virth. This is my home folder, and it's what's going to open every time I open the terminal application. On a Windows machine, you might see something like c colon backslash users slash your user's name, but it's essentially the same thing, and the command is the same. The next thing that you might want to do is you might want to see what is in this folder. To do that, type ls and hit enter, and this will list out all of the items that are in that same directory. Here you can see I have talks, teachings, Zotero, so on and so forth. If you're on a Windows machine, you might want to type, or you should type dir, which will do the same thing. It'll list out what's in your current directory. Now, once you've run a few commands, you'll find that your screen fills up a little bit like this. You can remove everything just by typing clear. Now, what this actually does is it just scrolls your screen down so it looks empty. But on a Windows machine, you type cls, and it'll do the exact same thing. So once you have those commands down, you might want to start moving around your file system, because we'll need to be in the same folder as our code to actually run it. Well, in order to change what directory, in order to change what directory you're in, you just need to type cd. Now, if I type cd and hit enter without typing anything else, it'll actually move me to whatever my home folder is. Now, that's not particularly useful right now because I'm already in my home folder, but I might want to move instead into my teaching folder. So if I type cd and teaching and hit enter, now you'll see, if I print my working directory, that I'm in my users virth teaching directory. cd is the same command on Windows to change your directory. If I want to move back into the last folder that I was in, I can also type cd space period, period, or rather, to move to the parent folder from, where I, from wherever I'm at. And now I print my working directory again, and you can see that I'm back in my home directory. I also might want to go to the root of my file system by typing cd space slash. If you're on a Windows machine, it can be cd space backslash. And this will move me into the root directory, which contains a lot of my system files. Now here, you don't really want to be messing around with anything, so I'm just going to move back into my home folder. Now, there are a few different ways you can put in the files that you want to change to. You can use what's known as the relative path. So I'm currently in my home directory, and I have all of these different folders. So here, I can type cd space movies and go there, and now I'm in my movies folder. And that's a relative path because it's relative to where I'm living in my, in my file structure. I can also specify a, an absolute path to jump around regardless of where I currently am. So to do this, I can type in cd slash users slash virth slash um, teaching. What this will do is this will move me directly into that teaching folder regardless of where I'm currently living. Now, I can also use a shorthand on a Mac computer, which is cd tilde slash teaching, and that tilde represents the home folder. There are a few features in most terminal programs that make your life a little bit easier. 
If you want to rerun a command you ran in the past, all you need to do is press up, and this will go back through the history of your commands. Alternatively, or another thing you can do, is you can use what's known as tab autocomplete, and this will automatically try to predict uh, what you're trying to type. So it'll just go all the way up until it hits an ambiguous character. So if I type cd slash u, and I hit tab, it'll fill out users because that's the only option. And if I type v and then tab, it'll fill out virth because I'm the only user on this computer that starts with a v. And then t, tab, you see it actually doesn't do anything here because I have both talks and teaching. If I hit te, it'll fill it out. So this is a really handy thing to know how to do when you want to run your commands. Now I'm going to go back into my home folder and I'm going to start um, inside this home folder I might want to create a new folder and I want to create a folder that's going to contain all of the code for this class. So in order to do that I'm just going to type mkdir, it's the same on Windows, space and then the name of the folder and in this case it's hth for hacking the humanities and I'll hit enter. So now that I've done this and I type ls, we can look at all of the folders and now we see that there's a Hacking the Humanities folder. And I'm just going to cd into this and if I type ls again you can see there's nothing in it yet. We're going to change that. All of the code for this course is available on GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash virth slash humanities tutorial you'll find this page. And this contains all of the code that we're going to cover and it'll get you all the way up to being able to do some very interesting things like stylometry and topic modeling. In order to download this, all you need to do is you need to click the clone or download button and then click download zip. From there it'll go, it'll download it and you can open it up from your downloads folder and if I just click this here, it'll open the folder and all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to copy it over into this Hacking the Humanities folder. And from here, I'm going to run all of my code. And once you've copied all of this code into this folder, you'll be ready to run it. So next time, we're actually going to get into Python. And I hope you're excited, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.